Good afternoon. Um, thank you all for uh, being here today. Uh, we have a decision that was made by the grand jury, which was December uh, 2014 grand jury. They started on December 1st. Um, I'd first like to give my thanks to this grand jury. They took their job seriously throughout their term of service, and in particular this case. After many long hours of listening to evidence, questioning witnesses, and after a lot of deliberation, they made a decision. Uh, briefly, let me give you a process. I chose to present this case in, uh, of an officer involved shooting to the grand jury and allow them uh, to exercise their civil powers uh, for the purpose of transparency. Uh, events have occurred across the United States that have caused me to pause and reflect on how certain cases should proceed. Asking the grand jury to issue a general presentment allowed us to have a court reporter present who recorded the testimony that was presented to the grand jury, and it also allowed the grand jury to explain um, how they came to their decision. The Jur Georgia Bureau of Investigation submitted a file to our office in uh, the latter part of December of 2014. The file contained over 2,500 pages of investigation. That number does not include the audio recordings um, and the, the tape statements that they obtained from witnesses. Since the grand jury convened last Thursday, February 19, 2015, 45 witnesses were presented to the grand jury. Several witnesses were called back by the grand jury for additional testimony. Witnesses included law enforcement officers, forensic experts, and civilians. Multiple civilian witnesses, some provided by uh, the Smith family, who were personally served um, a subpoena failed to show for grand jury. Despite their absence, their audio recorded statements were played to the grand jury. We had several civilian witnesses who avoided being served with a subpoena despite numerous efforts by the investigators with the district attorney's office. They went by in the morning, they went by in the afternoon, they went by at night, they also went by on the weekend. We knew that they were avoiding subpoenas. Despite their absence, their audio recorded statements were played for the grand jury. Officer Janot and the attorney for the Smith family have been notified of the grand jury's decision today. The grand jury issued a general presentment today and found that Officer Janot with the Savannah Chatham Metropolitan Police Department used justifiable force in the defense of himself and others in the shooting of Charles Smith. The general presentment was given to the presiding Superior Court Judge, Judge James Bass. It was then filed with the Superior Court Clerk's Office. I'm going to list several but not all the conclusions of the grand jury. The grand jury found the physical evidence obtained supported the following conclusions. Mr. Smith had a gun after kicking out, of the, kicking out the glass of the police car and exiting the police car. This is based on DNA of Mr. Smith's found on the grip in the magazine of the, of the gun found next to him at the scene. Evidence showed Mr. Smith, who was handcuffed from behind, moved them to the front of his body while in the police car. Officer Janot was the only officer who fired his weapon during this incident. This is based on the rounds present in the weapons of all the officers, testing done of the weapons, and the number and the positioning of the spent shell casings. Only one officer was present in each of the two marked police cars at the scene on Augusta Avenue. The grand jury found that Officer Janot's account of the incident was most credible. Physical evidence showed that Mr. Smith was under the influence of marijuana, cocaine, and bath salts at the time of the incident. The grand jury found that citizens' eyewitnesses failed to testify. Uh, however, their audio recorded statements were played. However, most of those statements directly contradicted the physical evidence presented. The grand jury expressed their concerns and beliefs that certain procedures concerning law enforcement should be changed. And finally, the grand jury expressed their concerns about the gun violence in Savannah and the number of convicted felons who are released from prison only to be arrested for new crimes while illegally carrying or using firearms. That was the total presentment of the grand jury, and it is not um, all of it, and as you, we gave you copies, um, it lists other um, concerns or um, evidence that they found. If you have any questions, we will take them at this time. Where is this going to go next? Um, are you going to agree with the grand jury's decision? Is this going to go to a second grand jury? Can you explain that, please? Sure. Um, we presented this to the grand jury, and they exercised their civil powers. When they are sworn in, they are impaneled by Judge Bass, the Superior Court Judge. When they're sworn in, um, they are um, instructed that they have uh, criminal powers to stand over and review indictments. They also have civil powers. In this instance, 
um, eight or more of the grand jurors um, called for an investigation of, of the force that was used on September 18th, 2014. Um, they have made their decision. Uh, they listed, we put all the witnesses up there that were available, over 45 witnesses testified. Um, we are going to follow their decision that justifiable force was used and no further criminal action should be taken against Officer Janai. Any other questions? Yes. Well, I could probably be sitting here for a while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not having read through all this, and apologies for that, just haven't gotten it. Is it possible, I mean, there, I think there's still so many questions about exactly what happened here, what, what the testimony was, particularly about how Mr. Smith had a gun when he was handcuffed and placed in a, in a patrol car. Is there any way you can kind of walk us through what the, what the evidence and the testimony showed, kind of the, the narrative or the timeline of it? Well, and, and as you look to the general presentment, um, the testimony was presented that witnesses on the scene, um, both law enforcement and civilians saw officer, uh, excuse me, saw Mr. Smith kick out the window, and they also um, saw him with a gun. There was also forensic um, testimony by um, stating that his DNA was found on the weapon at the scene. So is the conclusion that, that he had a weapon concealed on him that they didn't catch before they put him in the patrol car? Um, you know, the evidence was that um, he was arrested. 30 seconds later, the incident occurred, and the weapon was found near him, and that his DNA was all over the weapon. Uh, that's the testimony that was presented to the grand so jury. And there were civilian witnesses as well as law enforcement who saw a weapon in his hand as he was coming out the window. So we don't know where that gun came from. You know, I, I would, again, tell you that all the evidence, the open records were request, and I would say that you could look to the evidence um, and, and the investigation done by the GBI. What about the pat-down that was done out there? They, they said they couldn't find one or they never found one, or are you saying at this point from the evidence that the pat-down was not done correctly to find that gun? No, what I would say is that a pat-down was done and that officers testified that they did not find a weapon. Um, within 30 seconds, a weapon with Mr. Smith's uh, DNA was found at the scene where the incident occurred. Is there any sense of where that gun came from, that where on his body he might have had it? Because obviously it's not the easiest thing to hide, necessarily. Um, I, testimony was given that um, he was arrested, um, that there was a struggle, that they had concerns of the situation escalating, um, that they were trying to move him to the precinct, and that's what uh, the evidence was shown and the recordings, um, uh, the 911, uh, the radio recordings for law enforcement that they were moving him to the precinct and then that they would settle it then. I think their concern was to get out of the area quickly. Um, a pat down was done, uh, but subsequently the weapon was found. Could Is there any sense that that officer who did the pat down should mm -hmm. face any disciplinary action or anything of that sort? That is out of my realm. That is with the Savannah Chatham Metropolitan Police Department. Do you have any information as to the demographics of the, the grand jury, their racial makeup, the gender, that sort of thing? I would actually have to go back. Um, the, again, I would just say this is a grand jury that was impaneled by Judge James Bass. Mm -hmm. I would have to go and look. I don't have that information. All right, thank you. How many eyewitnesses were we talking about that didn't respond to those subpoenas? I believe we had uh, five eye eyewitnesses. Um, one did show. Um, I believe two um, avoided subpoena, and the three um, failed to come and give their testimony. However, in the um, position that we wanted to be transparent as possible, we went ahead and played the statements that they made either to the GBI, some did not make statements to the GBI, some refused to speak to the GBI, but did give statements to the Smith family. We received those statements via email. Um, they were not dated. Um, we didn't know who was in the room, but we went ahead and played them and let the grand jury make the decision. Is that a normal process in that case for something no, like this? No, it is not. Normally, we want to meet with the witnesses, we want to talk to them, and normally that evidence would not be admissible at trial. However, because we wanted to be as transparent as possible, we went ahead and played them. You went with a little bit of a different grand jury procedure this time around. Can you talk about that a little bit more and what we're seeing here? How much more detail is this than we would normally see in this kind of situation? Well, as the district attorney, you have several choices. I could review the file and make a decision. I've been a prosecutor for over 20 years. Um, I could present um, an indictment and go before a grand jury and say, you know, should this case be true billed or should this case be no billed? Um, usually you do it with one witness. This way we did it is, is for transparency because of what has happened across the United States. Um, and uh, putting up 45 witnesses, um, I mean, I, the grand jury, it was long, long days for them. I think that's unheard of. Um, we wanted to go to the extra mile. Any evidence we had, the good, the bad, the ugly, we wanted the grand jury to hear it. 
We wanted them to um, then deliberate and make a decision and issue a presentment of do they, did they believe that a criminal indictment should have been called or asked for, or did they believe no further action should be taken? Grand jury seems to, just from a cursory look, really hold the police to task for the way they handled the arrest itself and the media afterwards. Can you explain, can you talk a little bit about that for us? I can't. Um, again, you know, <coughs> we presented the evidence and then we stepped out. This was a presentment um, totally created by um, the grand jury, um, independent of us. And, you know, I can speak to the, their decision not to that, that believe the officer's actions were justifiable as to what they believe are policy procedures. That's something that the police departments would have to deal with. What would you have to tell the people out there who there has been so much controversy surrounding this and there are a lot of people who still, you know, look before getting a chance to read everything, may believe otherwise about the shooting. What would you have to tell them now that this grand jury, the grand jury has come back with their decision? The first thing I would say is that we went to every extent we could to put everybody up here who had any information. Um, even witnesses who failed to show. We still put their evidence out there. I know that there had been rumors and innuendos of, of potentially a second shooter, two officers. We, the GBI, we reach out to the GBI and they say, this is a witness they said was involved in the shooting. Um, the GBI would then go and track it down and investigate it and find that there was no merit to it. The grand jury listened to all the evidence, all the tapes, and found that the most credible testimony was Officer Janot. They found that the physical evidence, the shell casings, the DNA, um, corroborated the story of what Officer Janot stated happened. And Officer Janot said he was the person who fired the shots because he had fear for another officer being harmed and himself. From a GBI perspective, how many man hours did you guys put into this and how deep was this investigation? Uh, time is man hours that was just uncounted at this time. Exactly how many hours it would be, but it was a, a long investigation and thoroughly looked into by the agents at my office. Yes, ma'am. The issue of the second shooter, I fear, now that uh, this has become public, I've spoken to a witness, a witness who was called but ultimately did not testify before this grand jury, about seeing a second officer there. Um, my understanding is that there was a second officer present, perhaps even with his weapon unholstered. How do we know that that second officer was not involved in this, that he did not fire? Because the, the GBI um, investigated all weapons. Um, the weapon, Officer Janot's weapon was taken to the crime lab. It was um, examined and the uh, forensic firearms expert testified that the shell casings found on the scene matched the um, weapon that was used in the shooting, and that was Officer Janot's. What was the racial makeup of this grand jury? I don't have that information. Um, I, you know, and I keep saying, and I want to make sure everybody understands, that this grand jury was impaneled by a superior court judge. Uh, grand, I have no um, say in who was picked for a grand jury. Was the decision unanimous? That I don't know. They deliberated. We were not a part of it. Um, I can say it was a co cohesive group. They worked quite well together. Um, so after this, you do not, I know you would have the option, if you wanted to, to still draw up a bill of indictment. You do not plan to do that. I do not. I believe that 45 witnesses were presented to this grand jury. Um, an investigation um, with documents over 2,500. Um, I believe that the actions, the grand jury heard everything, even the witnesses who failed to show. Um, we still played their recordings, their taped statements. Um, I believe um, the decision that the grand jury made um, should lay this to rest. Okay. Um, however, Officer not could potentially, if another district attorney is elected, could be charged. Anyone could, um, unless you have statute of limitations issues. Okay. I think we're done. We are, really? What else? Well, I, I just, I mean, again, I think there's some, there's some details here. And again, apologies. I know this was a long investigation, a long report, but we, we didn't have much of an idea before this exactly what transpired. It says here, Smith moved, moving his handcuffed hands from behind his back, a fact supported by video evidence to the front of his body. Was there video from the patrol car or somewhere else that actually showed that happen? No, I, I, I believe what they meant is that there was video evidence that the hands were behind his back. When he was placed in the car, okay. Right, and okay. there's civilian testimony and also law enforcement testimony that they saw him after he kicked out the car with his hands in front of him with a weapon. And he actually, he was shot after exiting the car, is that correct? The physical evidence um, that the grand jury heard, yes. Okay. concludes or, 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 or cooperates that. And it says here he was shot five times? That is correct. Okay. And we know... That is through the, the pathologist. 
uh, Dr. Donahue testified. Do you know where he was shot? Um, five times I was a lot in the front. And I would, add, I would say with that, it's the open records request. You get a, I don't want to give you a piece and parcel because there were so many witnesses. Forty-five witnesses testified to testimony. There were uh, forensic toxicologists, a firearms expert, a pathologist, law enforcement, um, civilians. And again, if they failed to show, we still played their testimony. Okay. Uh, in, in light of everything that's been going on around the uh, nation, it was a very good decision by Savannah Chatham Metropolitan Police Department uh, chief at that time and command staff to involve the Georgia Bureau of Investigation in the investigation to have an independent look into the situation. So just wanted to give credit to the police department for reaching out to us at the beginning. How many more tools do you guys have than, say, the Savannah Department or any department right now to use in an investigation like this to make sure you get all the evidence? We have a resources throughout the state of Georgia. So not only do we have the Region 5 GBI office, if we need additional manpower, we, can, we have the ability to be able to call agents throughout the entire state. In addition, it also gives an appearance of propriety that you have an independent agency. Um, you know, they don't have an ax grind in this case is what their job is to gather the evidence and present it to us. They, they don't, they're not involved with the police department other than the investigation. I will say that it's sad when anybody loses their life, so condolences go out to the Smith family and also at the same time, sometimes when law enforcement is put in these positions, uh, no one thinks about the police officer, so condolences also goes out to the uh, police officer, Officer Bernard and his family uh, because he's undergone a lot throughout this investigation. So and I'd like to ask for the community to step up and support law enforcement and let's work together as a team. Right. Could you identify yourself again, please? I'm Cyrus Perderman. I'm the assistant special agent in charge at the Statesboro Field Office for the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The media doesn't speak. Uh, thank you for waiting on us uh, today. As you know, the grand jury made its recommendation uh, to the district attorney uh, regarding uh, the death of a citizen here in our community. And I'm not here to comment on the decision one way or the other, but I want to thank the members of the grand jury for doing their job. They are residents of this community, and uh, they were the ones that made the decision uh, to the grand jury after looking at every, I mean, to the, the district attorney after looking at everything. We want to thank them again, but we also want to thank our district attorney for having this uh, very transparent. Uh, when we first started this, we talked about transparency and what we would do in this community because that is what we are known for here uh, in the city. Uh, we want our residents to please remain calm, remain calm. Uh, with me today I have several individuals, of course the city manager, our chief of police, our assistant chief of police, and the president of the West Savannah Neighborhood Association uh, Mr. Williams. So with that, we want to thank you for your attentiveness. And at this time, if you have any questions, uh, we'll be happy to take them. Do I have the chief conference? Yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Today, the Chatham County Grand Jury released its findings in the Office of Law Death on September 18, 2014. The Savannah Channel Metropolitan Police Department expresses its sympathy to all families impacted by this incident. From the moment of this incident, the Savannah Channel Metropolitan Police Department, under the leadership of Chief Tall, pledged that it would be a transparent investigation, that it would turn it over to the external experts, and that it would cooperate fully. Now that the grand jury citizens of our county and city have spoken and made their decision based on facts 
physical evidence and forensics, etc. We in the Savannah Shadow Metropolitan Police Department call upon all of our citizens, our entire community, our visitors, to continue to, to be objective and process this decision in an obje objective manner. There was an extensive investigation by the majority of people for the investigation. There was a transcripted grand jury process. A, the district attorney, in my opinion, has spent a significant period of time preparing and presenting all known facts. We ask for peace and tranquility from all citizens and visitors as the Savannah Child Metropolitan Police Department and our citizens in this community go about maintaining peace and protecting our citizens and maintaining order in our community. Thank you. This is Mr. Ronald Williams, the president of West Savannah Neighborhood Association. Well, newly elected president of West Savannah <laughs> Neighborhood Association. And uh, I just want to make a plea to the community, you know, not only living in West Savannah, but outside of West Savannah, for us to, you know, do anything in a peaceful way and uh, uh, try to do things the right way. The grand jury has came up with a decision, and I'm hoping we can live with that and not do anything violent to uh, cause any other disturbance. Thank you. The city of Savannah pray for peace and tranquility uh, in the community. Uh, the grand jury decision uh, has been heard. Uh, they express uh, concerns about some of our procedures. And the chief of police uh, has been directed to look into those concerns and the recommendations of the grand jury uh, to further ensure peace uh, within this community. Thank you. We'll now take your questions. Chief, uh, the grand jury had uh, several concerns about police policies and procedures. The city manager has just said you've been directed to, to look at some of those issues. I believe they dealt with uh, transport prisoners, obviously the, uh, the pat-down uh, procedure that was used. and. Um, can't think about the other ones, but they, they had several concerns. Can you tell us uh, how quickly those policies might be looked at, might be changed in some way? Oh, I feel it was uh, hitting a camera possibly pointed inside vehicles. I know you just have made a big priority of getting the body cameras. We were looking actually at uh, designated patrol vehicles to be the backup in particular purposes for transport. Our paddy wagons, or our wagons as they're called, they are so equipped, but patrol cars are not equipped. Uh, we would we would start looking at those types of issues. Each issue that's mentioned in the grand jury, we will be looking at them starting today. We've already started looking at the cost issues and will uh, designate certain cars within each precinct to be actual transport in the back of for transport wagons. And that would include uh, to actually you put bars on the windows where you can't get out. And what about the pat down procedures? I mean, you, you have a uh, set procedure in place. There's an issue that we'll look at. Uh, there's an obvious uh, issue when, uh, but in this country, if you look at the Uniform Crime Report, you will see where officers are hurt every year and killed uh, when they miss by arms or knives. Uh, that we have them, uh, not necessarily in this community, but we have them get, uh, weapons get into jails. In my past community, we actually found a weapon in the record of the prison. So the weapons are, they are against by humans. We're gonna do a better job than what we've done in the past. Chief, what do you think the grand jury used the words appalled at the actions from those officers that day? What do you, what, what do you I think? I have not read that, so I don't want to comment. But knowing that they found a gun with a clip, you had three officers pat him down, do you have concerns about how this was handled? I have concerns if we, we missed the gun, and that's the concern. 
Yeah, but the word of Paul and how it appeared in the sentence, I have not read that. We, we missed the gun. That's, that is a grave concern. Could those officers face any kind of discipline for having this? I'm not going to have an objection what they face or what not. Have. But it's obvious we missed the gun. Hey, guys, it's the last question. Here. Chief, make a good one. Chief, uh, what, uh, what is the status of Officer Janelle? And will there be uh, an internal uh, Savannah Chatham investigation into the incident on top of the GBI investigation? There's always some administrative review after the, uh, this uh, process is over. And uh, what will occur, uh, we have uh, been notified of civil litigation. And I don't think I should go into any further questions or uh, answers about what may occur and what may not occur. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Thank you.